Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, my name is Michael Simire. I'm the moderator of this morning's on the record briefing on drought, desertification, and land restoration. Here are the ongoing 15 sessions of the Conference of the Parties to the UN Convention of, to Combat Desertification, UNCCD. Our briefer today is um, Professor Sikuturi, Sustainable Development Expert and an ex director of the African Development Bank. Professor Ture is presently the Managing Director of the African Group for Water, Energy, and the Environment, A3E, a company he co-founded after retiring from the African Development Bank Group in July 2019. He served as the Director of the Compliance Review and Mediation Unit of the African Development Bank Group. He was appointed in this position on June, January 2, 2013, and retired in July 2020. This unit administers the bank group's independent review mechanism, IRM. And Mr. Ture reports to the board of directors. Prior to joining the AFDB group, Ture was from September 2007 to December 2012, the Conflict Resolution Commissioner at the Global Environmental Environment Facility, GEF, at the World Bank. The GEF unites 182 member governments in partnership with international institutions, to set organizations and the private sector to address global environmental issues. The GEF provides grants to developing countries and countries with economies in transition for projects related to biodiversity, climate change, international waters, land degradation, the ozone layer, and the persistent organic pollutants. Reporting to the chief executive of the GEF, whom he advised, Ture was responsible for providing advice and leadership on the resolution of conflicts and disputes leading to the GEF partnerships. To overcome major impediments in GEF operations, Ture facilitated dialogue among GEF stakeholders to mitigate adverse effects of GEF financed operations and helped to build, build consensus and confidence in the process of compliance with GEF policies. Ture had moved to the GEF after serving from February 20, 2001 to September 5, 2007 as Director of Regional Office for Africa at the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP. In its capacity, Ture led UNEP's engagement with the African region, including leading UNEP's engagement with the region, including the servicing of the Afri African Ministerial Conference on the Environment, AMSEN, and contribution to the African Ministerial Conf Con Council on Water, AMCAO, and key initiatives such as the New Partnership for African Development. Prior to his tenure at UNEP, Ture assumed responsibility in senior positions in the government of Cote d'Ivoire from January 1996 to January 2001. Among others, he was junior minister in charge of water resources management from January 1996 to December 1999, special advisor to the state minister in charge of development planning and special advisor to the prime minister from January 2000 to April 2000. While in Cote d'Ivoire, he managed several projects and had extensive international experience and exposure in the field of environment and water resources management. He has contributed to the work of CSOs in Africa. Ture has extensive research and teaching experience from working in the US at the University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Ohio, University of Durham, Durham, New Hampshire, and in Cote d'Ivoire uh, uh, National Polytechnic Institute at Yamasukuro, as well as the University in Germany. This experience spans from 1986 to 1996. He has contributed more than 20 scientific and technical publications and has edited his scientific journal and a book. Ture also a PhD in civil engineering, specialized in environmental engineering from the University of New Hampshire, Durham, USA, and MSc in civil and environmental engineering from the University of Cincinnati, USA, and BSc in civil engineering from, from, from the School of Engineering in Yamasukuro, Cote d'Ivoire. Ture had major responsibilities in local political parties in Cote d'Ivoire for several years. Today, he will brief us on issues related to the importance of drought, desertification and land restoration, the role of the private sector, land res restoration benefits, and it will expand it on models in this regard. You also look at a uh, legacy program just launched by the president of um, Cote d'Ivoire, Alassane Kutara, the importance of to the country, exploring whether it can serve as a model, and what are the prospects for, for this um, uh, initiative's um, replication in Africa. Be informed that this project is being brought to you by the El Journalism Network, AGN, and the Robert 
budge safe town in partnership with the UNCCD. Uh, Professor Tree, we appreciate you joining us at this time. And um, before we commence, just some ground rules. Um, you're supposed to possibly um, switch off your camera for bandwidth, uh, or mute, your, mute yourself. And if it's time for question and answer, we'll be able to activate all these functions again. So Professor Tree will give opening statements and brief us as uh, required. And I'll pass it on to Professor Ture. You have the floor, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. <laughs> I'm told that uh, a lot of people are following this, uh, this discussion with, uh, with you. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. I wanted to thank you. You're welcome. I'm very grateful that uh, you brought me on board. Um, we, should, we should understand that uh, Drought phenomena is an, an extremely important issue uh, for countries, for individuals, for the international community. The world is facing unprecedented levels of drought phenomenon. Uh, that is what I consider one of the most far reaching natural disasters, uh, bringing short and long term economic and social losses million of people around the world. In the last two decades alone, the United Nations estimate that drought has affected around 1.5 billion people. That's a lot of that's a lot of people and a lot of impacts. And it has led to huge economic losses. The figures are around 124 billion dollars. What we have to keep in mind is that drought have deep, widespread, and, and uh, what I call an underestimated impact on society, ecosystems, and our economies. Droughts incur costs that are born what uh, we all know disproportionately by the most vulnerable people. That what makes it uh, 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 a little tricky to deal with. The extensive impact of drugs are consistently underreported, unfortunately. Uh, I guess it's because uh, it is a, a, a phenomenon that spans large areas, cascade through systems and scales, and linger through time. You see, one gets accustomed to it, and, and you really think that it's part of life. So it's not so sexy to talk about anymore. So people tend to live with it. But I tell you, it affects millions uh, of people uh, around, around the globe. What I, I, I wanted to do also is to alert you that drought is one of the major drivers of global food and water insecurity, poverty, and inequalities affecting agricultural production and access to food and water. Uh, Again, I'd I like to throw some figures at you so that you really understand the scale of the issue. Every year, it is estimated that about 12 million hectares of land become uh, unproductive due to uh, desertification and, and drought, of course. So drought has very many impacts, and I'm not going to go into you know, uh, details of that, but you should know that Impacts can be economic, it could be environmental, it could be social, there are a lot of social impacts. I have you know, highlighted a, a few of those. Now, what is interesting about uh, this phenomenon also, no continent except Antarctica has been spared. One example, and, and, and this is very crucial for me, when you talk, we talk about drought, desertification, land degradation. The first reaction of everybody is to look at Africa. No. In 2021, an active year is a, uh, in terms of drought in the United States. Let me give you a couple of figures. Okay. According to NOAA, which is actually the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association that, that you all have heard of. Moderate and severe droughts 
coverage increase across most of the country in 2021. The situation was especially dire in some areas, particularly the northwestern part of the country, which was facing some of it, its driest condition in over a century, following a heat wave that killed hundreds of people. The year began with 48, about 49% of the continental US in drought. And on January 1, for example, it stayed around that level throughout. So yes, there are some, some uh, continents that are most affected, but it is, it is a global phenomenon. In Brazil, and I'm doing that on purpose, because when it talks about Brazil, people think of tropical forests, uh, and they really don't relate to the fact that, you know, drought can have a huge impact on, on, on that country. There is a current drought here in, in Brazil, one of the, most, the worst ever recorded in, in, in that country. Co coffee production, for example, was expected to have fallen 23% in 2021. And low reservoir levels mean the country can't fully utilize its hydraulic uh, uh, plants because a lot of uh, energy production comes from, from, uh, from dams. That drives up electricity bills uh, for, for the economy and for everybody else. Now, what is important is that there are some responses to droughts and, 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 and land degradation. In Africa, for example, and that's, that's uh, I want to do that before coming back to, to the private sector and, and, and then probably uh, and the private sector and also uh, what, what is, what is, what, what one can consider models and what is happening in, in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, when, when, when you look at uh, the Great Green Wall Initiative, people really thought that this was a tree planting exercise, that what the African leaders were you know, fighting for was to get some resources and plant tree from Senegal to, to Djibouti. No. No, 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 no. If you understood the Great Green Wall Initiative like that, you are very wrong. These are sustainable land management activities throughout the, that, those regions to make sure that we reverse the trend of uh, land degradation that we have seen to build into uh, practices, uh, uh, activities that are really conducive to reducing land degradation, trying to limit the advance of, uh, of the desert towards uh, the towards, uh, uh, south. There are restoration uh, activities that are ongoing in Latin America. Here uh, or in Africa, I mentioned the Great Wall. You go to the US, the same thing. So we do have some, some experiences now, and we, we, should, we should learn from it. So let me take you then very quickly to the, uh, what we are trying to do in Cote d'Ivoire, and I can stop there. If, if you don't mind, uh, and then and, and, and take some questions from, from everybody. In planning for this, uh, this conference, the idea was, well, we have a great green wall initiative that is in the very dry areas of, of, of the continent, uh, Niger, Senegal, and Mali. But what about the countries that are coastline countries that have some you know, forest cover? Land degradation is happening. So what kind of uh, initiative could, could one launch to make sure that you know you try also to have programs in those countries depending on their, their physiological conditions? So that is valid now going anywhere from Gambia, Liberia, Guinea, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, you see, uh, because you have some forests and also some dry areas in the north, northern part of those countries. The idea was to just come up with a, a, a program of land, sustainable land management, and then look at the economy. And how do you really focus on what is a major driver of economic growth in those countries? In Cote d'Ivoire, it's the agricultural sector. Yeah. We are, the economy is based on agriculture. So we will focus on, on that. And what is it that can be done to reverse the trend that we have seen? For some of us in Cote d'Ivoire, everybody knows it now. We say the belt of coffee production has moved from you know, one area of the country because you know, uh, the productivity of, of the land is not so good when you continue 
you know, the same practices on the land for a long time. So that is one model. Okay. Okay. And and we are starting. We hope that you know some of uh, the outcome of uh, the, the results can be shared. And I mention it again. We want to see if you do something in Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Liberia, Nigeria. You know, it could be elsewhere in uh, in in, in uh, Latin America. Okay. Basically, this is what I wanted to, to say as an, an, an introduction. I'm looking forward to picking up people's questions. Okay, so, so I, I don't know. Have you spoken about the there was an initiative you said that the, the president uh, has launched legacy programs? Yes, that's what I meant. That's okay. the, 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 uh, the model that we are trying to establish in Cote d'Ivoire. Okay. The initiative is called uh, uh, the legacy program. Okay. And again, you know, we have to find a sexy term. Uh, the president says, well, the cop is coming to Abishan. Mm -hmm. What do you guys leave behind? Okay. And the idea was to come up with a sustainable land management program tailored okay. to addressing, uh, supporting the agricultural production of the country okay. and making sure that we try to reverse the trend that we have seen, uh, look at land productivity, reduce uh, forest degradation, et cetera, et cetera. That is a major program okay. that, uh, that is called the legacy program. Okay. Is, I, hope, uh, I believe it could be part of the uh, Great Green World program. Uh, no, not not work. really, not okay. really. You know, okay. the, the Great Green World countries are essentially the countries in the dry, dry right. part of okay. of uh, okay. of uh, okay. of, uh, of the country. Okay, okay. So this. But is, uh, people should understand that it's you know it's not because you are you are listed as you know member of that those countries that you're not affected yeah, you're not and affected. that you shouldn't do anything. Yeah. If you were to ask me, I say all the countries are part of it. Yeah, except Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we, we have, um, thanks for your for briefing us. We have a question here in the Q&A. Um, it's from Anonymous Antendi. Um, so the question says that, I'm interested to know what you think should be a focus for journalists beyond writing on the subject of droughts. Do you think certain types of journalism, for example, data-driven or solutions journalism is more effective at generating policy changes than other types, for example, focusing on the problems? If, if I had an answer uh, uh, to that question, it's not an either or all. Okay. You see, the, the, the information that you guys are covering should, uh, should, should be tailored to everybody. Okay. There's a time you need to provide data to some of us as researchers, as, as scientists. If I have access to that, that kind of information, you are helping me, you know, do my job better. And you're also helping me disseminate the data and information that I couldn't uh, disseminate otherwise. So that kind of journalism is extremely important. Don't think, it, don't uh, undervalue it. The other aspect is that uh, People like to just, you know, hear about uh, excitement, you know, breaking news and et cetera, et cetera. That, of, that type of reporting is also good. Don't think that it is negative. It is to make sure that people are aware of the issue and they listen to it. Okay. All right. So to me, uh, you know, you can cover the whole spectrum, uh, addressing specific uh, uh, target groups. Okay. And and uh, depending on the situation, you can put more emphasis on one or the other. For example, the COP. The cool thing about the COP is that I, mean, I wanted to give you some data, but you know, if you were to go and repeat this data, it may not necessarily be so useful to the large public. Okay. But what is important is to highlight now what the CCD meant at the, at the creation. Okay. What is it doing? And then focus on for the people. You see, okay. it's not people think it's a UN. No, it's not a UN. Is you? So when we are reporting, and you guys do it very well, take short stories, examples. You know, somebody in Udine, in Dabakala, in Kaduna has done this, that, that, that. So that when I'm in a small village somewhere, I hear all the stories. Oh, I can do the same. I can do the same. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we are still expecting some more questions. But meanwhile, uh, there's one area of concern. Uh, I believe that um, drought has affected, as 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 initiated this uh, challenge. I'm sure you are aware of the problem with Lake Chad. Yes. Lake Chad uh, uh, borders several numerous countries, and uh, over the years, it has shrunk alarmingly. 
And um, I know countries have been trying to um, initiate ideas, different initiatives to, some are thinking of um, getting water from elsewhere and to pump into uh, the child because it's, it's affecting the livelihood of a lot of people. Absolutely. And it's even, uh, some people use a catalyst to this um, unrest, uh, unrest and uh, banditry in, in Nigeria, Cameroon, Nigeria, and several countries. So from your experience uh, in the sector, so what do you think is the best way out to address this lake charge challenge? Answer number one. I think what is happening in the context of the Great Green Wall is extremely, extremely important. Okay. You see, what happens is when you let your land degrade, it loses the function that it was supposed to be doing. Okay. If you lose your vegetation cover, all right, then what happens is when it rains, it will just, you know, remove your topsoil okay. and then, it, you know, take it uh, elsewhere. So sustainable land management is very crucial and that is happening. Countries are trying to do their best to, to do that. Listen, uh, me, I was trained in the US at some point in my life. There are huge transfers of water, even in, in Southern Africa. It's coming from the uh, highland there. They are collecting the water and transferring for drinking water purposes. Okay. So don't let anybody, you know, raise doubt about the fact that if scientifically and technically one can do some water transfers to build some water with a child, technically it's possible. Okay. And we should look into it. It is an issue of cost. It may cost a lot of money, but as you say, look at the indirect cost that is, it is bringing to the countries. Right? Yes. And, and then you have now to bring a huge chunk of security in the area, fighting this terrorism is possible. So again, you know, water transfer, sustainable land management, individual country effort, and regional cooperation, uh, because it's not an issue of one country alone. It's a, a, an issue of, uh, of several countries. And also, I want to conclude on that. You see, people expect quick results. Okay. All right, I invest the dollar today. I want to see the return tomorrow of five dollars these kind of activities take time all right people have to be patient they have to sustain the effort it is over a long time that you will see that the lake chart condition is going to improve and and i have read uh, a lot of people writing oh we are putting money here and there there's no nothing no all the restoration efforts take a long time all right so we should stick to with the government should stick with those who are putting effort in into it eventually it should happen okay thank you sir we have a question for Usani bafana from uh, zimbabwe uh, it says that uh, africa is one of the continents most affected by drought do you think the un city has the best capacity now to accelerate continental action towards reducing land degradation um I, I just don't want to be harsh, uh, and, and I observe this often. I may be wrong. Uh, if I'm wrong, you will forgive me. It's not an issue of UNCCD, all right? It is our issue, all right? The good thing is the African Union has really developed a major program on, uh, on this issue of land degradation and drought and, and desertification. They should be informed and improved with country proposals and country solutions and country activities, all right? You see, the UNCCD framework, it's a framework at the global level to make sure that at the international level, focus is maintained on, 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 on the topic. Okay. But UNCCD is not a financial mechanism. They don't have money. They don't have resources to do it. Resources should come from countries, okay. all right? Your bilateral programs with donors, the IMF, the World Bank, the African Development Bank, and internal resources. We have to really, really improve on that. You know, I was telling somebody, when uh, they were building this uh, hyphen tower in Paris, or some of these uh, old, uh, you know, you go to Washington DC, huh, all these nice buildings, they date back from when people had nothing to eat. So don't Imagine for a thing that if you are building for the future, that you're wasting money. 
we tend to focus on short-term gains and forget about building for the uh, for long, long time. Okay. I mean, this is our, one of our problems in uh, the continent. So again, my short answer to him, to you, sir, is that yes, UNCCD is there, but I will just provide you with framework, talk about the issue. For example, uh, they organize the head of state summit in the context of the 15th COP. This is the first time okay. to raise the political, you know, uh, 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 sensitivity around the issue. When heads of state talk about it, not one, not two, over 10, big, big, big thing, all right? It, you keep it alive, but it should be translated into local, local actions and nobody can be better at that than yourself. Okay, yeah. thank you, sir. Um, okay, while we're waiting for another question, um, there's this um, uh, idea initiative that has gained ground over the decades, um, integrated water resources management. How, how, how can this um, initiative help to tackle drought and desertification in Africa? Absolutely. I, you know, this is really something I've, I've worked on for a long time. And basically, you, you saw my resume. Yes, yes I did. Uh, we really work hard to establish AMCAO, okay. the African Municipal mm -hmm. Council on Water. You see, when people talk about water, all they see is I want to get water to to wash, cook, and drink. But everybody forgets that if you don't have the resource base, all right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have the water resources, you're not going to, to have it, all right? All we focus on, invest into collecting the water and di distributing it. We don't invest enough into protecting, mm -hmm. making sure that the resource base itself is safe, mm -hmm. We do research to make sure that uh, we monitor the availability of the water resources, whether it is rivers, surface water, or groundwater. So unless we do that, uh, we are not going to move ahead. So integrated water resources, the concept is that you have to look at the full picture. You have the consumption, the use of water, mm -hmm. but you also have to look at the resource base okay. and, and invest heavily into research, uh, investment uh, to protect, all right, improve your knowledge base of your, your resources and monitor, you know, whether, you know, your, the supply and demand, you need to, to just work on it. Okay. So it's very, very crucial. Okay. Uh, and for example, you talk about the chat, it's a basin, it's a river basin. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, you just have to continue monitoring, collecting data, rainfall, rainfall patterns, Runoffs, how much water is getting into into the child itself? Is it replenishing or or, or shrinking? Yeah. So remember, you take uh, this uh, satellite data, you see it shrinking. Yeah. yeah it's it's shrinking. It's it's so I was going to, uh, something came to my mind uh, that, okay, now that they have uh, recharged the child, how do you prevent it from, from, um, uh, from shrinking again? So I, I guess the, this, this idea of uh, integrated water resources management yeah. comes in. Listen, uh, one of the issues that you have to keep in mind is there are some natural phenomena. Evaporation will continue. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that there is, this is a natural phenomenon. Yeah. As climate is changing, unfortunately, mm -hmm. all right, it may lead to more evaporation. Okay. All right, you will lose some of your water to evaporation. There's no question. Yeah. The second thing is, is the use of water. That's what we're telling. Mm -hmm. For years, people thought that all oh, this water is plenty. It's there. So all we did, we pump it and we do some agricultural thing. There was no data collection on it. Because if you were to monitor it over, over time, mm -hmm. at one point you notice, oh my goodness, we have gone 20% reduction in the, the volume of water this year. Then you put measures in place. Okay. To, to slow it down and try to reverse it either uh, by, uh, by uh, restoration or as you indicated, transfer of water from elsewhere to elsewhere, if it's feasible. And again, it's all, it all, all bogs down to economic issues. You know, Lake Chad, the location is such that, you know, to transfer water, but it's been, it's been done elsewhere in the U.S. It's been right. done in the U.S. Oh, no, I mean, they take water from uh, the Colorado River, for example, and then they just take it all the, all the way to California, etc. Absolutely. Absolutely. These are uh, engineering things that people do. And there's a lot of experience here. 
Thank you, sir. I know that you've had experiences with the, with the Jeff funding, climate change funding and issues. I think this question by Paul Omorebi from Nigeria uh, looks um, relevant in this regard. Is that seen? Is there sufficient funding for the Great Green Wall Initiative currently? Oh, my goodness. I wish uh, I had the data. Uh, we should congratulate uh, those who really, uh, it was last year, if my recollection is good. Uh, sir, please uh, send, uh, I, I want to have your email and I'm going to send you some data on, on the Great Green Wall okay. because they have created now what they call the Great Green Wall Accelerator. Yes. All right. And uh, President Macron organized a summit. Uh, uh, I think it was last year, yeah, where so. they mobilized a lot of money for the Great Green Wall. And I want to send you a report on it so that you have the correct figures. Okay. I, I don't have the data on top of my head. I don't want to give you the task. Yeah. So it's Paul. 2001 M. Yahoo.com. 2001 M. At Yahoo.com. Yahoo.com. Yahoo so I will, I will send that, this, you know, the, the, the data to you. There has been major, major efforts okay. in mobilizing financial resources for the Great Green Wall. Okay. Uh, we should all be pleased. It's one thing to, <laughs> to get the pledge. Mm -hmm. It's also another thing to access the money. Too, yeah. So our own people should work very hard and try to comply or to comply with the requirements of the donors who have pledged the money. Yes. And That's make right. sure that you disperse. If you don't disperse, you know, the money is just a pledge. All right. Are you aware of any, any contribution by the AFDB? Uh, I will give you the data. All the major development banks are putting a lot of money into, into it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the World Bank, the bilaterals. Uh, I will send you the data so that you can see it in, in, your, in your network. Okay. By the way, you can also access their website. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send you all the information on it. Please share it with, uh, okay. with the network. Huh? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. So, uh, okay, we're well, well, we're waiting for another. Well, so let's just uh, look at this initiative. How do you think the the UN on two, this UN conventions are collaborate to address the application the Convention on Climate Change yeah. and the Convention on the, the, the absolutely absolutely you can you can see that these three conventions are interlinked. Huh? Okay. Uh, climate change, desertification, and biodiversity. I mean, yeah. if you degrade your land. Yeah. All right, you are clearly going to to suffer because you will lose a lot of biodiversity and et cetera, et cetera. They are linked. Yeah. That's why they have the three major conventions uh, that were, were approved and adopted in Rio, okay? So they have a joint secretariat. So they work together to, to just, you know, feed into each other's process. Okay. And, and I think that they are doing a very good job. The good thing is that, you know, since literally the same parties that are part of the conventions, the same states. Yeah. So the states really, you know, there are effort financing from the GEF, for example, uh, to, to contribute to the three conventions. Okay. GEF, for example, is the, the financing mechanism for the, for the UN system. So they are bound in their mandate to provide some resources to, to uh, the, uh, the convention. Okay. And I know all the donors, I mean, the adaptation fund, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they are all providing some resources. So there is there's a, a lot of joint effort. Yeah. And, and I think my advice to our governments and those who are working at the local level, you see, the conventions have their focal points in the country. All right. They are the ones that are participating in convention processes. Number one, they should make sure that at the national level, those convention focal points coordinate their activities. Okay. Because these are national programs. Yeah. All right. If you don't have national programs, you know how can uh, the outside people help you? I have seen instances where those people don't coordinate. Number two, they are not their own representative; they are representing their government. You understand? So they should make sure that whatever information they collect in the processes are fed into government processes through their ministers. Okay. And 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 then third, the financing. Each uh, financial mechanism, whether bilateral or multilateral, etc., etc. Everybody has their own procedures. So we should be very smart to just not stop uh, as asking people to pledge money. That's not enough. They will pledge. Move into looking at the, the, the institution's uh, procedures, 
and comply with it and work with it and help the soldier to get the money. You understand? People think that when I come and I say, we give $5 billion, there will be an account open tomorrow. And it doesn't work like that, right? The African development, Bank, they have the procedures. The president cannot disperse money if the board of directors has not approved the project based on national priority. So they work with the government to identify government's priority. Government will tell me these are my priorities. And they work with the government to develop those projects. And the projects are approved at, uh, by, by the board and it is implemented uh, by, by the government. So we really, really have to work very hard at that. And and I see a lot of shortcoming in our own effort. People, I mean, there's money sometimes and disbursement rates are 5%, 10%. The money is there, we are not dispersing, and people are complaining, oh, the World Bank procedures, the African Development Bank procedures. I mean, they don't disperse a penny, nobody, even as the head of family. All right? There are procedures that anybody has to follow to spend your money. Otherwise, you know, yeah, it's true, it it's doesn't true. work. It's true, because there's some, there are some uh, uh, talk that um, some countries, you know, how to access those funding, as a challenging, they have to hire experts to, to you know, Help them out. Absolutely, and absolutely. I mean, we need to. Uh, hey, they are dispersing very well in Asia. Yeah. So, I mean, why can't we do it? So, let's not stop by saying, oh, their procedures are too complicated. And no, that's not enough. All right. We need to make the extra effort, work with them, understand their procedure better, and beat them at, at that game. Thank you very much, sir. On that note, um, we have. Uh, Come to, we're coming to an end, come to, to the close of this briefing today. And I want to believe that um, we will uh, enlighten things very well by our uh, dear Professor Ture. He has been um, shedding some light on the on issues on gratification and land restoration. Um, thank you, sir, for your, for your time to brief us. And we thank you for uh, further collaboration with us. Said you're going to send us some some documents with respect to them, sir. So, thank you everyone for for this briefing for being a part of this briefing. We hope that you've been enlightened by our discussions today. Thank you, and bye bye. The pleasure has, pleasure has been mine. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. Sir. Thank, thank, thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Bye everyone.